Hello everyone and welcome to this week's video. Today I'm going to be talking about performance radiators. This particular radiator is a performance radiator for Acura Integras courtesy of Yonaka Motorsports. I will include a link in the description uh, to this product so if you'd like to check that out. Um, also if you haven't yet watched my video on cooling systems that may be beneficial to kind of get a general idea of how the cooling system in a car works uh, before watching this video. So this particular radiator is a top-down uh, coolant flowing radiator um, and it's a single pass design. So the coolant is going to come and it's going to come in from the engine hot and fill up this uh, end tank here at the top and then it's going to flow down through these little uh, tubes here, these rows traveling to the bottom and then it's going to travel to this bottom end tank and then go back to the engine once it's been cooled. So at the top we can see the radiator inlet where the coolant flows in, travels through this end tank, then travels down through the radiator rows and out through the outlet here. So now that we understand the basics of how a radiator works, uh, let's take a look at different criteria used um, in order to create a performance radiator and some of the different ways that you can increase the cooling of a radiator. So I've chosen uh, eight different ways which I feel are some of the most important. Um, certainly there are more out there. So the first I'd like to, like to talk about uh, is the dimensions of the radiator. Preferably you want a radiator that's very wide, very tall, um, has a great frontal surface area, and it's very thin. And that's the, way, the best way to get uh, the amount of heat that you want to reject out of it. The thicker the radiator, um, it starts to build heat within it and you don't get as much cooling. So you want it to be thin. The problem with this is space constraint. You can't just place massive radiators inside of cars, so uh, they do have to have a, a decent thickness added in order for increased cooling. So overall, you can see this is a fairly wide and fairly tall radiator, um, and, and fairly thin, so it takes pretty good advantage of the space uh, in the front of the Acura Integra to make sure that they get the most efficient use of, of the space in there and the best cooling possible. Another criteria used in uh, radiator design is the fin density. So having a high fin density um, between the coolant passages uh, and where the air flows through will allow for greater cooling um, than a low density like you see here where the fins aren't quite as dense. However, you're also going to increase the pressure drop um, so you're going to have reduced airflow through the radiator with a higher fin density and depending on your fan situation it may not be possible um, if you have something sitting at idle uh, and you're not moving your vehicle and you need to pull a lot of air through it to cool the engine then a higher density is going to restrict the airflow within. So checking out the fin density, um, I'll put my finger there for reference, you can see it is a fairly high fin density um, to maximize cooling but with, with cars you want to make sure it's not too dense because you'll get a lot of things caught in there um, if it is. So having a decent amount of space available can be beneficial. Another thing to take a look at is the number of passes in the radiator. So most radiators in, for automotive use will be a single pass design where you have end tanks and the coolant comes in one side, flows through the passages, and then exits out the other side. However, if you add a, a pathway, so you put in these plates in the intakes, so that the coolant has to flow in a certain manner, you can increase the cooling because you're increasing the amount of time that that coolant is going to be inside of this radiator being cooled. And so, although you will have greater cooling, you're going to have more restrictive flow, so your operating pressure of your system is going to be higher. You're going to have to pump a higher pressure uh, to move your coolant within. So this is a single pass design. All of the coolant will flow from the engine to this top end tank and then down through these uh, coolant passageways and then to the bottom uh, coolant end tank. So it is just a single pass design but this is pretty common for automotive applications. Another thing to take a look at with radiators is the number of internal rows. So these are the passageways which the coolant passes through. Um, and ideally, you want to have as much surface area with the fins as you can. So if you just had a single row going all the way across, it would contact all of the fins um, and you'd have pretty good heat transfer. That said, uh, the larger fins here aren't quite as strong, so you put in multiple fins in order to increase the rigidity of the radiator. So these tubes uh, aren't that strong if, the, if they're very wide, um, and they can also be built very thin depending on the material selection. So for example, um, if you have two uh, two-inch rows with only a one-inch gap uh, without touching the fins, then that'd be preferable over three uh, one-inch rows 
with two one inch gaps in the center. That said, the three one inch rows may be a bit more uh, durable, maybe a sturdier construction. So it depends also on your material selection, which I'm going to get into next. So looking inside of the radiator, you can see we're looking here in the inlet. Um, you can see this is a two row design uh, and it makes pretty good use of the total length of the radiator. So you, that's what you want to see um, is as few rows as possible, um, but you, you do want multiple rows for strength and you want to make sure that it's making full use of the entire uh, thickness of the radiator. So material selection, one of the greatest uh, materials for heat transfer is copper. Um, it's, it's a very efficient material to use in radiator designs. However, it's not that common because aluminum has a lot more benefits. Aluminum's lighter, it's stronger. Uh, because it's stronger, you can make the tubes thinner and therefore you can kind of uh, balance out the heat transfer. So though the copper may have better heat transfer, if it's really thick, um, it won't have as great of heat transfer as if you have really thin aluminum to go right to the uh, coolant. So by being stronger also, it allows you to use less rows like I was talking about up here. So aluminum is, is usually the preferred uh, material choice. Now that said, some radiators will use like plastic end tanks um, to save cost. So it's pretty obvious just by looking at this, but it is a all aluminum design, um, including the end tanks which are welded on uh, all aluminum. So with uh, standard radiators, um, OEM style, you may have plastic end tanks um, and those can fail over time and, and cause leaks. So with these aluminum end tanks, it's typically a much stronger, longer lasting um, solution. And of course, aluminum is a great material for performance uh, style radiators. Another criteria to look at is fan speed. So this is a pretty straightforward one. The greater your fan speed, the more air you pull, pull through this radiator, the more cooling the radiator is going to provide. That said, using really high fan speeds uh, for applications where the car isn't moving um, and you need to pull air through it rather than just using uh, the car's speed to pull the air through, you're going to have to have more powerful fans in order to get higher speeds. So that comes with added cost, added weight, added complexity, uh, more power draw, things like that. And also higher fan speeds are going to be a bit noisier. So here we can see the fans um, of this radiator. Uh, there's two 80 watt 12 volt fans on the back there. Um, and another thing to notice is that these are on the back of the radiator. Um, and that's kind of a critical design feature. So in automotive applications it's pretty much the norm. However, it is more efficient to pull air through a radiator rather than to push air through. Um, you can typically see gains of about 20% uh, in efficiency. The next I'd like to talk about is coolant flow rate. Uh, now this one might not be entirely intuitive, but the greater the flow rate, the greater speed of the coolant flowing through the radiator, uh, the overall more energy you can remove from it because the coolant is going to be at a really hot temperature as it's traveling through. So the temperature differential, which I'll get into next, is going to be greater than if the coolant was moving really slow and got to lower temperatures more close to the ambient temperature. That said, if you have a lower flow rate, your outlet temperature may end up being lower because the coolant is in the radiator for a longer time, so the temperature of it drops more, though the overall energy that you've removed from the total system is less. So this comes at a cost of uh, the system pressure uh, and the outlet temperature. So a high flow rate is great, but it's going to have a higher system pressure and it's going to require uh, a greater, a more powerful pump in order to pump the coolant through. The last one I'd like to talk about uh, in designing a performance radiator is the temperature differential. Uh, and this one isn't really something you have much play with, but it is very important to the overall heat transfer of the radiator itself. So ideally you want a very low ambient temperature and you want your inlet temperature to be somewhat high so that the temperature differential, the temperature between the inlet and the outlet, or in the ambient temperature, for example here I've got 150 and 30 degrees, so a temperature differential of 120 degrees, that's a really high temperature differential and so you'll be able to pull out quite a bit of energy uh, using this system. The problem is you can't control the ambient temperature. So when designing these things, you have to kind of design for a worst case scenario, maybe something like 120 degrees or 100 degrees Fahrenheit for automotive applications um, for some of the areas where cars are used in hotter temperatures and you still want to be able to cool them, obviously. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.